This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. wet grinding. I like to grind with as much water on the platen as possible. Multiple benefits to that. So firstly, we'll start with the benefits to the end user. The temper stays harder. People who are much more knowledgeable than myself have done laboratory tests. Even if you're very careful whilst dry grinding, say your knife is heat treated to 60, 62, 63 Rockwell, you're going to end up with a 60 Rockwell edge and a 62 Rockwell spine, which is not what you want. So I like to flood water over the, over the blades to try and keep the edge cool. And then as a benefit to the maker, the edge staying cool means that I can keep it pressed up in here for much longer without having to dip it into this bucket and I can press harder. Now these abrasives like high pressure, much higher pressure than you can actually apply pretty much by hand, but especially when you're dry, uh, dry grinding. By grinding at higher pressure, the abrasive life is the same time, but I get four times as much grinding done in that time. So you can grind pretty much four times as many knives on a belt if you have water running over it. So I massively advise if you're a maker, set yourself up some kind of wet system. Got some lock line, very small amount. I think this cost me 10 pounds. And then a hose pipe, which literally just goes to a tap outside the door. And then the water will drain down into this into this bucket and then back out of a second hose and all the way out of the door. And then I'm also going to fit this really dirty homemade shroud, which keeps half of the water from spraying onto my chest. Another benefit actually of, of uh, wet grinding is that you have to deal with a lot less dust in the end. Yeah, well, we, we definitely take lung health very seriously. Won't survive very long as a knife maker if you don't. Uh, in fact, old school knife makers, you know, back in the 1800s, average lifespan for a knife grinder was 27. So protect your lungs, guys. <laughs> I've already ground off the edge of this blank just to make sure that the core is centered. Now I'll just be grinding up to about halfway up the bevel, completely flat, and I'll leave about a third of a millimeter of a flat face in the middle of the edge as well. And then once I've got this about halfway up completely flat, I'm gonna kind of grind halfway sort of on this line and on this line in order to give it a convex surface as opposed to a totally flat surface. Um, that's about a third of the way through the grind. I'm just going to stop at this point, take some measurements of how thick the edge still is. There's a little bit left to go there. And I want to bring this up just a little bit further and then I'll start the convexing work. I start with a 36 grit most of the time. It is, as long as there's a lot of material to remove, I'll go with 36. And then 60 is my favorite grit probably in terms of shaping stuff, uh, 120. And then mostly I'll go to handwork at 120. And I like to do quite a lot of sort of geometry change in the hand sanding anyway. So I might as well head there earlier because I've got more control. It's very similar really, I guess, to what the Japanese smiths would be doing by finishing their blades on stones. So you can really control the, just the amount of convexity right down at the edge. Right, it's just gonna stick a sharp belt on here. That also helps to keep things cool. If you use a, a sharp belt, this one's fairly well worn. Always finish on a new belt. So I'll go up down to 60 at this point. I find I like to switch to 60 quite early in the process. Even if I bring the bevels up by another centimeter, I'll probably still find a 36 grit scratch site hiding in there somehow. There's those two scratches that are on every knife. I probably should have a name for them. <laughs> I'm ready for the next stage in the grinding process now. 
So if we imagine this part of the knife is like a triangle, which I mean it is, roughly on a knife this size, the angle of these two sides are gonna be about seven degrees at the moment. What I wanna do now is make another bevel up here that's about two degrees shallower and another bevel down here that's about two degrees steeper. And that basically gives the surface a slightly curved finish, which will both travel through material easier, also will shed material easier. So if this is dead flat, things like to stick to it quite a lot. Whereas if it's a little bit curved, you can get a little bit of air behind, say your slices of potatoes and they fall off the blade just a little bit easier.